Greetings, true believers, and welcome to the Just Another Guy Talking About Stuff YouTube channel. In this video, I'll be talking about comic books, specifically Volume 2, Issue 4 of the classic Marvel What If series. Any issue of the What If series is always one of my favorite things to pick up when browsing through older comics. It can be frustrating when you find an interesting comic, but then have a hard time finding the rest of the story. Not with What If, though. There are a few multi-issue stories in the series, but for the most part, since each story is just a hypothetical situation, it gets wrapped up neatly in just one issue. That makes it a great discovery whenever you can come across one of these, and most aren't too difficult to find. I always find it fascinating with what the writers will come up with since they aren't bound by any consequences of the story. You can change characters' allegiances, start massive wars, or even destroy the entire universe. You aren't tied to any one continuity and anything goes. Before we start talking about the issue proper, let's give out some credits. The writer was Danny Fingeroth, Mark Bagley was the penciler, Keith Williams was the inker, the colorist was Tom Vincent, Ken Lopez did the lettering, and the editor for this issue was Craig Anderson. We start with, as usual with the series, the Watcher explaining to the reader that this is an alternate timeline. He gives a brief recall of how Peter Parker first got the black Spidey suit in this first Secret Wars. He hooks up with the black cat, Felicia Hardy, who gains some superpowers of her own thanks to the Kingpin. That causes them to split, and Spidey ends up married to Mary Jane Watson. The new suit is giving Peter Parker problems, though. It keeps hijacking his body while he sleeps, and eventually refuses to listen to him. Fortunately for us, it doesn't cause him to start arrogantly pointing finger guns at people walking down the street. He goes to Reed Richards of Fantastic Four fame to remove the suit. Richards is successful because of course he is. But the suit escapes and Peter has to get rid of the suit, the old-fashioned way, of going to a church bell tower. Eddie Brock, of course, becomes Venom, but we can spare you any more Spider-Man 3 references because that isn't the multi-universe that we're in. The Watcher explains that none of that happened here. This time, Spider-Man isn't going to remove the suit in time to stop the bond. Kind of a spoiler alert, but it was in the title, so I guess it's okay. Spider-Man is talking to Black Cat about how he just isn't feeling himself since he's come back from space. She suggests he might have a space bug or something, so Peter decides to check it out. In this reality, the Fantastic Four isn't home, so he name drops Black Bolt for foreshadowing reasons, and then goes to see a non-lizard Kurt Connors to ask for help. Turns out that Dr. Connors is useless, but then he names drops the Hulk because he'll be appearing soon, and they need to explain why he isn't Bruce Banner. Spidey finally gets to Reed Richards, who figures out that the suit is a living being, but they are too late and the symbiote won't leave Peter's body. The symbiote tries to escape while still in the web slinger's body, so Reed and Johnny Storm throw him in a cage. So when science fails in comic books, what do you turn to? That's right, magic. So they have to turn to the best magician in the city, Dr. Stephen Strange. That too turns out to be useless, however, but Strange does get another Hulk name drop in, just in case you were wondering why Bruce Banner wasn't here to fix things, and to let you know that the Hulk was going to be in the comic soon. The symbiote does get some villainous lines like, Spider-Man and I are one now, and no power in the universe can separate us, before making their escape. Reed calls Felicia to give her the bad news, and she doesn't take it very well. She takes it so poorly, in fact, that she goes to the Fantastic Four headquarters just to insult him in person. She's so upset that she robs an auction house and gives her bounty to homeless people to sell. Not sure how that helps. Now these poor homeless people are going to be caught with stolen property, but at least she's trying, I think. In what I can only imagine to be an homage to It's a Wonderful Life, we get a quick side story about Hulk unintentionally murdering three S.H.I.E.L.D. agents because Spider-Man wasn't there to stop him, as in the original timeline. Doctor Strange is about to teleport Hulk away before he can cause any more destruction, but... The symbiote shows up to stop him, figuring the Hulk would make an even better host than Spider-Man. The symbiote ditches Peter in order to attach itself to Hulk, leaving behind an old man Parker. The Avengers, not figuring out a way to punch themselves out of this problem, don't know what to do. Symbiote Hulk is able to easily escape, and the Avengers retreat back to their mansion with an elderly Peter Parker, who is able to give some exposition about how the creature feeds off adrenaline. Black Cat decides the symbiote needs to die, but Thor reminds her that it would kill Banner. That doesn't seem to bother her, though. After a week, Parker is well enough to go see Aunt May, who understandably doesn't recognize him. So he lies about his identity and claims to be a co-worker of Peter that just stopped by to let her know how much Peter cared about her, and that Peter will eventually turn up. Something it doesn't even seem like Peter believes at this point. Mary Jane is there to comfort Aunt May. The character, of course. I'm not referring to marijuana here. That would make for an interesting what if. She worries to herself that Spider-Man's enemies might have finally finished him off. Reed Richards soon finds a collapsed Peter Parker who has died of old age. After a cameo-filled funeral, Black Cat meets up with Kingpin at Spider-Man's grave. 
Following some banter between the two, Kingpin offers Felicia a ride home, and after some hesitation, she accepts. We then find Reed Richards doing what Reed Richards is usually doing, working on science stuff. It's been two days since the funeral, and he already has something to not only track the alien, but a weapon that can apparently kill it. Reed gives a call to the Wasp, who was leading the Avengers at the time, to give her the news, claiming that his weapon must only be used as a last resort. Reed, being a good guy, doesn't want to kill this thing unless they have to. So Reed and the Avengers track the symbiote to Mount Rushmore, of all places, and head out to find it. Thor is the first one to come across Symbiote Hulk, despite the alien tearing up huge pieces of land that you would think would give away his position. The alien shows remorse, claiming that it didn't know he was killing Spider-Man until it was too late. It then tells Thor that it is restoring Bruce Banner's mind and taking Hulk's power away so Hulk can't smash anymore. Thor can't trust the alien, though. I mean, would you? So they have a little fight when Thor wants to take it into custody. The symbiote gives Thor a challenge, but it is no match for Mornir, and with one good quam, the alien oozes off and leaves behind not a Hulk, but an unconscious Bruce. Thor seems pretty pleased with himself, until... It turns out the alien outsmarted Thor. Big surprise there. And after taking the powers of Spider-Man and the Hulk, it is now set on possessing the God of Thunder. Thor resists, but it's helpless to stop the symbiote from attaching himself to him. Running out of option, Reed Richards is about to use his ultimate weapon on the creature, but being a good guy, he can't bring himself to potentially kill Thor. Pretty good thing for the reader, though, because the symbiote Thor is the coolest looking one yet. The Fantastic Four and the Avengers attempt to attack the creature, but they can't punch their way out of this problem. They all try to convince Reed to use his weapon, but since he's a good guy, he wants to try one last plan. Someone approaches the alien, and the Watcher tells us that this someone fills the being with fear. It turns out this someone is the leader of the Inhumans, Black Bolt. Richard's last plan, and the symbiote is not happy to see him. Black Bolt sends out a scream that literally brings down the entirety of Mount Rushmore. This frees Thor and subdues the creature. Just when Doctor Strange is about to use his magic to banish the alien, a blast out of nowhere kills it. The blast is revealed to be from the black cat, Felicia Hardy because she isn't a good guy and had no problem killing this thing. The Watcher then gives us the bad news. She stole the notes for Reed's weapon and brought it to the one person she knew had enough resources to make one themselves. In exchange for the ability to kill the symbiote herself, she is now indebted to the Kingpin for the rest of her life. So unfortunately for Tom Hardy, there is no Venom in this universe. I really do like these what-if stories, though. This one got to shove a bunch of popular characters into a single story that didn't have a particularly happy ending. Not all of these stories end with happily ever after, and that can be a refreshing change of pace. Spider-Man is dead, Hulk is no more, and the Black Cat leads a life of servitude to one of the biggest villains in the Marvel Universe. At least we wouldn't have to debate whether or not Mount Rushmore is problematic. So thanks for watching this random comic review. If you like what you saw, please give a click on that thumbs up icon, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when my next video will be posted. Until then, witty sign-off catchphrase.